political changes is in 1990 led to the adoption of the democratic constitution and of the multi-party system and introduced liberal values in the society. Among many others, right against tortures, cruel, inhuman, and degrading treatment was recognized as the fundamental rights. And after four years, a Torture Compensation Act was promulgated by the parliament. In the aftermath of the promulgations of the 1990 constitution, the government of Nepal ratified Major 6 International Human Rights Treaties, making Nepal bound by the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the International Covenant of Civil and Political Rights, and the Co Convention Against Tortures. However, Nepal already had an obligation under the Geneva Convention, ratified in 1963, to treat peoples with dignity even during armed conflict. Further, the promulgations of the Nepal Treaty Act in 1991 established, established the primacy of international law over domestic law. International law can be referred to in the court to declare any provision as ultra-wise. The Supreme Court can issue a directive order to bring in line domestic legislation with the provision of international law. Nepal also established a National Human Rights Commission, which is mandate, mandated to protect human rights in accordance with international and national laws, and combating torture has been part of it, its mandate since then. Further, the government also introduced a National Human Rights Action Plan. Actually, government has last year introduced three years National uh, Human Rights Action Plans, of which torture is one of the focused. That is implementation by the Peace Ministry of Nepal. The 10 years of the arms conflict in Nepal brought a new political scenario. A comprehensive peace agreement was signed in 2006, followed by the interim constitution 2007. The interim constitution prohibited and criminalized torture and ill treatment by including the right against torture in the chapter of fundamental rights. Five years after the adoption of the interim constitution, the government preparation of bill of criminalized the tortures, which was tabled in the parliament. But now we don't have a parliament, so this bill didn't enter in the parliament, so we should have to wait for the new um, elected parliament. The next of it and comments are provided in the dossier prepared and circulated by the ALRC in this program. It is an executive proposal and I will assure you that the parliament will make necessary change and parliament parliamentarian can give an amendment pro proposal in the house when this uh, bill will be tabled, entered in the uh, next uh, parliamentarian. So I will assure you that the parliament will make necessary change in the bill to meet the international obligation and best practices around the world. The comprehensive peace agreement as a state of a promise to deal with the past atrocities committed by the government forces and by the Maoist insurgents, including torture through the adoption of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission and Disappearance Commission, and for which two separate bills were tabled in the Parliament. Actually, these two separate bills have been already discussed in our Parliament, and in this separate bill, all the parliamentarians from the different political parties, and in that uh, committee, I was the uh, coordinator of that subcommittee who had a responsibility to fulfill to draft this two important bill. And in that important bill, there was so many hot discussion about some uh, issues. Uh, within the, these two bills, there was so many debate. Uh, just in the uh, Truth and Reconciliations Bill, there was one provision, and all the parliamentarians from different political parties, they are agreed, because in that bill, there are four components. One is the uh, reconciliation process, rehabilitation process, reparation process, and compensation process. And uh, there was a top debate that um, uh, uh, compensation process, if in the compensation process, if perpetrator is not ready to give a compensation, is 
state will take this responsibility to give compensation to the victim side so that was very hot discussion in our committee and second thing in that um, the truth and reconciliation bill uh, we all parliamentarian are ready uh, just rape case murder case uh, disappearance case and torture case should not be subject of the amnesty process so these are the uh, right down under the non amnesty process so that was also a very hot debate in our uh, parliament or in our legislative committee so uh, the political parties and the government are in the mood to uh, prosecute some of the emblematic impl cases at at a deterrence to ensure that such thing will not happen again the activism of ngos is nepal has exposed the practices of torture by the police arm police force and nepal army and other quasi judicial bodies with alarming indication that nepal must do away with such practices currently the national human commission previously the office of the high commissioner for human right in nepal and many national and international organizations and the respective security organizations themselves have been engaged in providing human right training to reform the behavior of the security forces that is the very positive sign uh, that has helped to reduce the tortures but it still remain a part of the system as a matter of attitude of the law enforcement authorities the special reporter on torture visited nepal in 2004 and in his report he provided many recommendations and these are still being implemented further nepal took part in the universal a periodic review in the human rights council and many of the upr recommendations are being discussed and implemented in nepal the voices and concern raised by the international organization like the asian human rights commission have contributed to raise the profile of torture case and many torture compensation case are being filled in the court by organized just like a advocacy forum the government is implementing the court order to provide the compensation uh, to the victim uh, as well as supreme court have already ordered to the legislative to make a uh, law concerning to domestic violence uh, bill and as well as sexual harassment bill and other some uh, special uh, law uh, based on the humanitarian grounds so in our country judiciary is so more uh, powerful and strong to give order uh, to the legislative and as well as uh, um, executive the political change in nepal in 1990 and uh, 2007 have strengthened democracy but we are still continuing our effort to build up the rule of law and human rights protection system the police act criminal code evidence act the prosecution and the prison prison system are under questions the government has tabled the criminal code bill in the parliament and that bill uh, was so effective but uh, but uh, that uh, criminal code bill uh, at that time entered in the parliament but uh, uh, after that uh, pa parliament has been dissolved so maybe we should have to wait for the next parliament now works and underway to prepare the police bill and witness protection bill the supreme court has recently ordered to government to reform the quasi judicial body and make them in compliance with the fair trial and independence of the judiciary further the supreme court has also ordered to reform the military justice system to make it in line with the independence of the judiciary we are in the process of change and increasingly feeling that we need to invest the in the infrastructures and human resource development of the police and other law enforcement bodies along with legal and systematic reform the government has been working to implement the 1325 and 18, uh, 1820 resolution of the security council and torture against women women's role in the transitional justice system are being discussed and an action plan is being uh, prepared and uh, and if uh, if you see the trend in torture of women in nepal so last four years advocacy forum did survey in the cust study and find out mostly 10 to 13% of women claiming for the tortures 
so uh, peace ministry is so serious and uh, um, the peace ministry is going to ha have been already made a uh, action plan uh, for the transitional justice system uh, at last finally the practice of the torture is reduced in nepal but the system remain to be built and we have a long way to go to make nepal a torture free country. I request to international organizations, the Asian countries and other members of the international community to continuously engage in the Nepal and play a role to combat torture. Nepal is going through a very difficult time, but at the same time we are reforming the laws, institutions and procedures. The active civil society and the human rights friendly political parties will work further to raise the voice, build the system to fight against churches and to restore the inherent inviability of the physical integrity of human personality. So at last we know that all the um, friends and delegates from different political parties all are the worried about the political scenario of the Nepal because you know that our parliament has been dissolved and uh, we are, there are some questions because many new agendas just like federalism, electoral system, political system and uh, some transformations, uh, some restructuring policy has been debated in our CA, Constituent Assembly, but uh, lack of the consensus between the political parties uh, at last uh, House or Parliament has been dissolved. And now we have a uh, take care uh, government because in our interim constitution there is no any constitutional provision uh, to held a new uh, election for the consent assembly uh, because of the unconstitutional um, election declaration by the present government. Uh, we need a national government and find out the uh, political and uh, uh, constitutional solution uh, by the consensus between the political parties. So uh, we are uh, now in this uh, uh, time because in, uh, in our Nepalese uh, political scenario, we should have to complete many agenda. First of all, we should have to complete our constitution making process. And second, uh, we should have to implement many of the agenda uh, regarding to the peace agreement. And third, we need a uh, parliament election. So these three um, uh, agenda is uh, very important uh, in our political, in our constitutional political scenario.